Hello, this is John Vijak from Miami, Florida, discussing nanoarthroscopy camera instrumentation for elbow arthroscopy. This is a right elbow and it's in the lateral position. One of the reasons I like the lateral position is it serves several purposes. One is gravity helps distend the elbow. Two, it allows for flexion of the elbow to open up in the spaces. And three, it allows us to work side to side without having to use multiple hands in doing the surgical procedure. This is the lateral epicondyle. And one of the things we are concerned about on the radial side is the radial nerve. There's three portals that are always discussed. The more distal you go, the more dangerous it becomes regarding the radial nerve. So what you want to do is try to be more proximal with your cannula placement. Usually I use the mid lateral portal, which allows for safety and excellent viewing of the area. On the ulnar side, you have the ulnar nerve, which you have to make sure someone hasn't transposed, and you also have to make sure it doesn't sublux. And also you have the median nerve and brachial artery. So we want to try to avoid those areas, again, by having it in the lateral position, elbow flexed, and we're going to add fluid to the joint to distend the joint. It adds to the great safety of the procedure. What I like to do is through the radiocapitellar posterior region, just inject some fluid. This does two things. It allows me to make sure I'm in the right plane while I'm doing the procedure. And you can feel, make sure that you're happy with your position. If not, you can move it. And two things happen. One is you can see the fluid come back. And also, sometimes the hand will rotate as the joint distends. The next is the first working portal that I utilize is the radial portal. And again, you want to feel for the radial head and you want to come just anterior to this. What you want to do is make sure that you're working in a plane that you're not fighting your radiocapitellar joint in the skin. One of the beauties of the nano scope is that you really need minimal skin. And then what we can do is place our trocar, feel for the radiocapitellar joint. So what we have here is we have, I can feel I'm in the joint. And here we are in the joint very easily. You can see that we have an excellent view of the ulnar aspect. I'm pushing on the medial side and you can see there's, this is a zero camera. So we see excellent view of the coronoid. We see an excellent view of our trochlear groove anteriorly. You see the capsule anterior. What I like to do is look at the ulnar side from the radial portal. And I like to look at the radial capitellar joint, which you can see right there from the ulnar portal. The beauty of, again, this nanoscope is, is because it's zero degrees and it has such an excellent small space, you can see, I can look all the way across. I can even see to the back of the joint. This you can't do with even small joint scope. So you can see, you get an excellent view of that whole area. We like to start with our ulnar portal. So there's first by checking, usually just with finger, and then I check with a needle. Again, you can easily make this portal. You can see that we're anterior. I usually just make a little stab incision with an 11 blade. One of the things about nano arthroscopy is that most of these portals can even be closed with a steri strip. You don't really need uh, much of a portal at all for this to get these instruments in. So we have our cannula on the ulnar side now. And if you wish, you can use a shaver, do synovial work on this side. If there's a bone spur, you can use a little burr right there to clean that up and you have an excellent view of the entire ulnar aspect from this portal again one of the things that is very nice about this system compared to other arthroscopy systems is that because of the damp and the way this flow is set up we are able to get minimal water loss we're not getting the soft tissues descended so it's a very nice in that regard so what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch from the radial portal into the ulnar portal. I'm going to leave this cannula in place so we're not having to shift cannulas, which is very important, as you know, in small joint work, trying to deal with flow. And you can see, again, we're now looking at the uh, radial side. And you can see the capitellum. You can see your radial head. I'll just rotate the arm and get an excellent view of your radial head. And if you look straight down, you can often see the annular ligament. It's just going to be below our, our synovium here. We can probably clean a little bit, but there's our annular ligament coming around the base of our radial head. 
And we have an excellent view of the radial head and capitellum. Looking up at the entire capitellum. And you can even back up our camera to see some of the coronoid. So one of the niceties of this system is that we can shift our instruments right through this cannula. And we're going to put our shaver in now. And if you wanted to switch back to the other side, again, it's easily done because of the fact that the fluid will stay with this cannula system, this working cannula system. So you can also add your suction punch for removing of soft tissue, grasping, loose bodies, and it'll allow you to do a variety of, of work from the anterior chamber. So there's our suction punch coming through on the radial side coming ulnarly. One of the niceties of this suction punch is that you can actually rotate 360 degrees from the outside if you're not comfortable with the position that you're in because of the handle, you can just rotate it and put it wherever you want to get your pathology corrected. After finishing the anterior work, what I like to do is go to the posterior chamber and I use a very straight posterior portal in the radio capitellar joint. One of the reasons I leave an anterior cannula when I first do this is sometimes there's a loose body in the trochlear groove or radio capitellar joint and I'll have a bad habit of floating anteriorly. So it's nice to leave that in in case you have to go chase it if it goes anteriorly. Once I'm comfortable, I can go ahead and remove that anterior chamber. Really not a whole lot to worry about in the back here. We can just take our small incision and then place our cannula in the joint. So this is the uh, radio ulnar joint. You can see how the radio ulnar joint articulates well. You can look up the olecranon and trochlear groove. And you can see how far you can see over with this camera, the zero degree camera and the nanotechnology, because you can come right across it. You can't even do this with a, a small scope. So that's a, one of the big positives of this type of technology. And we can work our way all the way up to the tip of the olecranon. And now we're in the olecranon fossa. And what we're gonna do is make a posterior portal. One of the little tips is you wanna go a little bit farther back than you would expect. This is the tip of the olecranon. And actually you wanna go two or three centimeters more posterior to get into that space. And as we get to the posterior compartment, the olecranon fossa region, we just take our needle. And again, we wanna be two or three centimeters proximal to the olecranon tip. It's a little bit more of an angle than you would normally expect. And here's our posterior portal with our trocar. So here's our olecranon tip as I'm flexing and extending the elbow. Get a beautiful view of the olecranon tip. A little osteophyte there that you can burr off. And then we're going to come over into the medial gutter. And very often, you can see the entire ulnar collateral ligament and you can see your, your bands running bottom to top, that's your transverse portion, and then your posterior and anterior bands of the ulnar collateral ligament. And I can see an excellent view of both of those. If you wish to find a loose body or clean, you can actually make an accessory portal back in the uh, trans tendinous. That's not an issue. You're not, you're not, not gonna cause any damage. It's a very common portal to utilize. But you get an excellent view down this gutter. And then as we come back, you can see the olecranon tip. And then if you want to make a portal, there is our olecranon fossa. A lot of times you'll find loose bodies back there. And you can make an accessory portal to get rid of anything in that area. You can put this pretty much anywhere you want. Depending on where your pathology is, you can make an, an ex, extra portal and go ahead and get rid of any loose bodies, synovitis, PVNS, I can feel it. I'm right in the fossa. We can make a portal. If you feel more comfortable, you can actually do this from the opposite side. I mean, what I mean by that is looking up from your posterior, straight posterior portal, if you feel more comfortable doing that. These are extra portals that you want to limit your portals when you do arthroscopy. You want to be cognizant of fluid extravasation. Now you can see the olecranon tip. We're looking way over into the medial gutter. You can see your ligament. You can assess whether the tip, by extending the elbow, you can make sure that you're coming all the way down and not hitting. Sometimes there's osteophytes or bone spurs, especially in 
in pictures that you have to trim out. And this is an excellent view to fully visualize what can be taken care of in the posterior fossa, where very often this is where the pathology lies. 